Welcome to a video on learning Twine. In this video, I'm going to cover an extended example of using Story Style Sheet and Story JavaScript within a single story here. Let's look at the presentation to start. In the very first passage here, we have a passage link to another passage called Garden. Clicking that, we see 12 squares, 3 rows of 4 entries. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. As we saw here, as we watch them, the colors changed. If I click on a square, it changes from gray to brown, from brown, if I click again, to green. However, intermediately, the colors are changing, despite the fact that I am, in this game, watering my garden and going from gray to brown, from brown to green, but they're changing back again. Let's go look at the code of this. Starting at our start passage, we see two different macros being used here. The first is a set macro, setting the variable plants to an empty array. Then we're using the for macro to create a loop from 0 to 11, starting as we saw 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So from 0 up to less than 12. Each time we're setting an entry within the plants array to a random number between 0 and 4, 1 to 3 in this case. As we saw, I have three different states. Each state matches a CSS class. It's gray if it's dying, Intermediate is brown, ground, and green plant matches our CSS classes, our three different states. However, the start passage is also using line continuation in SugarCube. This allows us to run different code together so that space is reduced. We're using it here to run all of this together so that our very top entry is a link to another passage, Garden. Closing this and moving over to the garden, we see the content of the garden passage has two different lines here. The first of which is a div element with an ID of garden. We're also using the include macro to include the passage plot timer. Let's go look at plot timer. Plot timer is using the silently macro to enclose all of this to disregard all output. This is similar but different than the use of a line continuation in a start macro. The start macro, we were continuing lines together to save space. Silently macro here disregards all output. Within that, we're using the repeat macro for every one second. So we're repeating all of this code every one second indefinitely. Within this, we're also using another for macro and going through plants again. Again, 0 to 11. In this case, we're setting a temporary variable state to the value of the entry matching the current value of the temporary variable i minus a 1 in 6 chance, either 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, or 1. And then if state if the value of the temporary variable state happens to be less than or equal to 1, we go ahead and set it to 1, just to prevent any 0 or less than 0 values. Finally, we're setting the new entry back again. So a 1 in 6 chance of it being reduced by 1, if it happens to be 1 or less, or less than 1, go ahead and cap it at 1, then we're setting the new value. Then we're including the passage plots. Let's stop here and go look at the content of the passage plots. Content of the passage plots start with the no BR macro. This is similar but different to line continuations in start, which runs lines together, and the silently macro, which is used in plot timer to disregard all output. Plots with no BR means reduce any potential additions of the BR element down to a single space. So we're keeping some of the space it's, present, it, it's enclosing with no BR, and this is different to the silently macro, which is used in plot timer to get rid of all output, which is different than line continuation in the start passage, which runs lines together. Within this is a use of the replace macro. The replace macro acts on some selector value, right here an ID of garden, as we saw in the 
garden passage and replaces it with whatever is within this macro. And this is an HTML table of three rows. As we saw in example, three rows of four entries. For each row, it contains its own for loop. In this case, running 0 to 3, as we saw, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then testing to see what the entry of the index of the plants array is. If it is 1, we go ahead and add a TD table data with the class plant dying, and then we add a button within it matching that index. As we see here, 0. Then, if it's 2, plot ground, and if it's 3, plot plant. Again, set to the random numbers, this first loop through, that were set in plot timer, or set in the start passage, which was then used in plot timer, which is called in plots. So we're doing this entry by entry, 0 to 3, 4 to 7, and 8 to 11, for a total of 12, including 0 up to 11. So this prints this prints uh, shows the first four values, this is the next four, and this is the final four running in turn. In each case, it's choosing which table data to put down and including a new button. Now that we've done plot, let's go back to plot timer for the final part of this. Each loop within this of every one second, it is running setup bind buttons. Setup is a global variable and bind buttons is a function or a function property of that global that we're running within, we are running within each loop here. Every one second, we are possibly, or possibly decreasing any one random plant value by one in six chance. We're updating that value, then we're redrawing the table every one second, and then we're calling setup bind buttons. Setup bind buttons is not defined in any of these passages. It is defined in the story JavaScript. So finally, to close out this video, let's go look at the story JavaScript. Coming down to the story menu, going up to edit story JavaScript. The story JavaScript here is doing a number of different things. The first of which is checking to see if Windows Setup exists. If we're using Sugarcube, Windows Setup should already exist, but just in case it doesn't, we go ahead and create it as an empty object. Next, we're creating a new function on that global object called bind buttons as a function. We're using jQuery, a, li a library that's part of all, that's part of Sugarcube that comes within Twine 2. We're, click, we're <laughs> listing for all click events on all buttons. If there is a click event, we're getting the text of that button. In this case, it's index 0 through 11. Then we're finding that index within plants. We can reference variables in JavaScript and Sugarcube by referencing state that variables and then its name. So every time a button is clicked, we're looking for that entry matching its value, 0 to 11. Then we're updating it by 1. Then we're looking for its parent element. In this case, the table data matching the button it's in, it is within. Then we're seeing what the new value is and similar to how we were updating the table each time looking at the value, we're updating the CSS classes on the parent element of the button. If it's equal to 1, we're removing ground and plant if those happen to be there and adding dying. If it's 2, we're removing dying and plant if those happen to be there and adding ground. And if it's 3, we're removing dying and ground if those happen to be there and adding plant. This is a quick way of chaining jQuery here, remove class and add class, and removing potential CSS classes and adding another one. So this all JavaScript here looks for each loop, a click on a button, and if so, responds, updating not only the value of plants each time using state variables, but also the CSS classes of its parent element, the TD data entry that was added each time. This allows us to use JavaScript here in story JavaScript to react to the buttons, use 
macros within SugarCube to write all of the rules of replacing content and updating it every one second, and using Story Style Sheet to establish how we want those plots to look. In this case, using the Plot class, coming back down the Story menu, looking at Story Style Sheet, using the Plot class of a width of 60 pixels and a height of 60 pixels, and the three other CSS classes of ground, plant, and dyeing, each within their own colors, matching their own states. This is a very complex example of using both Story Style Sheet to establish C additional CSS classes, as well as using Story JavaScript within SugarCube to add jQuery to a story in this example, listing for events on buttons, using the run macro within a repeat macro loop to rebind those buttons each loop and so they can react. Also using state variables to look for the name of an existing variable that was created within a passage and using all of this together, story style sheet, story JavaScript, and macros within SugarCube to create a complex example here. Again, this has been a review of how to use Story Style Sheet, Story JavaScript, and complex sets of macros within SugarCube. This example, a link to this example, can be found within the description of this YouTube video, as well as a proof copy that contains the same code. Thanks for watching.